Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, the Normandy edition. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm Gavin Ashenden. And I am sitting down and I'm not scratching. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the show. Uh, Gavin, it looks like your internet is, uh, you know, doing much better this week. Yeah, yes, it is, Kevin. My internet is working extremely well, and I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I got cut off for three days, and then everyone said, where are you? In fact, our, our neighbors up the hill, uh, their, their children um, in the south of France nearly called the police out because uh, if you're, if there's, there's no phone signal here. So if your internet goes, you become incommunicando and uh, everyone expects to hear from you. So I had people saying, you know, have you been taken back into hospital? Have you know, what's happened? Well, uh, it's back and it's working nicely. A lot of people don't know what you're referring to when you said you're, you, you are sitting down and you're not scratching. Uh, in our pre-show... I was hoping... Yeah, I was hoping you'd bring that up. Yes. In our pre-show, <laughs> my dog decides to get up and do his uh, stretch and scratch. And so I, on the microphone, all you hear is, Phoosh! and I say, sit down, stop scratching. Gavin, confused Not by what I just said. Not knowing you your feet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gavin goes, why are you telling me to sit down and stop scratching? Well, you know, that's just part of the conversation we have from pre-show Gavin you know Kevin just got real <laughs> <laughs> I'm still wiping away the tears yes, anyway. it was pretty funny <laughs> you should have seen the shock look on your face <laughs> all right so uh, today's show please donate likes uh, we don't need your money right now we will soon when we raise money to go to GAFCON uh, but uh, donate likes uh, just click the like button in YouTube or uh, Facebook uh, I'm only getting f probably five or six shares an episode. You guys can do better mm. out there. I know that sharing this episode, all, it's it's the button next to the like button. You just click share. Either that, or you're scared to sh you're scared to admit that you watch the program. That's the only excuse I can uh, uh, hinder in my mind. Uh, Gavin, I I follow you on Facebook, and I saw. <sighs> something that's in, in my mind i'm not gonna say atrocious because i have a famous <laughs> elephant lamp uh it's one of those egyptian ones where the elephant has all these curls that hang down little ribbons all the way around and my wife loves it she thinks it's just the, the darling of our dining room and i saw that you picked up a sailboat lamp well, are you a lamp <laughs> a lampaholic as well well, I'm I'm no I'm a sailboataholic, and I've lost my sailboat, and uh, oh. and I I can't. Well, it's really really sad. I've been sailboating since my father, who was a naval officer in the Second World War, taught okay. me to sail when I was very small. Um, and we went. This, the French have these massive warehouses which are full of secondhand goods, and French secondhand goods are, are so beautiful. The wardrobes and the the beds and the furniture are just they're marvelous because they're very big. And people have have got live in smaller houses. Um, so we we go looking for bargains, and I I I, I particularly like rescuing crucifixes. Uh, you find you know, our Lord is, is kind of cast aside, and for five euros you can rescue him and give him a better home. Than, uh, but but on a particular occasion, my wife saw this this. Uh, lamp with a little wooden boat attached in beautiful detail which we both agreed was probably appalling taste and she said but I, I i bet you like it and i said you know it is really terrible but i really think i like it so she said well put it back and i said no i said i i, I think it's too awful for that i think it's got to come home with us <laughs> and the fact is <laughs> you're saving some it's, other family from suffering for having to take it good, good one for, well, take one it, for the team gavin <laughs> <laughs> so she said well you know if you're paying for it then she said well where do you think you're going to put it in the house and that that was much more problematic yes. anyway we yeah. have found somewhere that's but, um, good. I, I i love it it's awful it's such bad taste but i love it <laughs> well i'm going to post a picture here so people uh send me a picture when you sure. get a chance and we'll we'll let people know what we're really talking about um quick update before we get to the news um you had a serious eye issue you had retina surgery uh, what's the update? How are you doing? Have you returned to uh, your virtual ministry uh, online yet? 
Thank you. Um, it, well, it's getting better slowly. It's only, I think, four weeks since the operation, and um, uh, it's it, it continues quite painful from time to time. But the it looks like the retina is holding. You never really know, uh, and uh, I must say I worry. Um, but but on the other hand, it's in the Lord's hands. Um, and yesterday I started morning prayer again. This morning prayer thing took me took me really by surprise. It, it began at Easter time when I was sitting in the back of the church, having surrendered my orders for the Church of England. And I said to the Lord, "This is crazy. Why are we doing this?" <laughs> um, you know, I I should be up front putting my heart and soul into a into a sermon on your resurrection. I'm sitting at the back here twiddling my thumbs. The guy who's doing it's good, but I should I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought the Lord said to me, "Go, you're quite right, go and preach on the internet. And I, I said to him, that's crazy. I've just learned, after 35 years, I've just learned how to preach. Uh, and well, I'm beginning to learn how to preach. And you want me to do it in front of a camera? I, I can't do it. No, that, I won't do it. Gavin, if Kevin can do it, anybody can do it. I just let <laughs> well, he didn't say that. He, he didn't say that to me at the time. I, I should have I should have listened more carefully. I yes. heard that. Anyway, I stuck it. I kind of Abraham like I, I stuck a deal with him. And I said, "Look, there are forty-two people here. I'll go home and I'll do it this afternoon. And if you give me forty-three people um, who share it, <laughs> like it, then we'll we'll do it week by week." And I I got over two hundred and fifty. Hmm. So I said to him, "Okay, it's a ministry." And then the next thing he did was he said, "You know, we all all priests say the liturgy, say morning and evening prayer." And then I thought he was saying, okay, now do morning prayer on, on Facebook Live. I didn't even know what Facebook Live was. So I said, well, heavens above, let's try it. And now to my huge surprise, before my operation, I had up to 500 people a day joining me for prayers. Now, the, the really important thing for me was that, that when I was blind and hurting and awake in the middle of the night, I would have given anything for somebody else to have put up a, a liturgy I could just lie back and join in with and so if anything my illness and the um, un unhappiness and pain that came from it showed me that I would really like this <laughs> so I started it yesterday and um, uh, I, again I was surprised at the number of people who were out there and who who joined in so uh, I'm, if you people are described as a kind of an internet monastery which I think is a is a, is a quaint but not completely inaccurate um, notion it's it's People gathering to be a community of prayer, but but using the internet to do it. And so, uh, if if you pray with me, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, the the internet really has become a a community f for those who want to find like minded people. It's the uh, the social center. It's the back porch, the front porch, so to speak. Um, and you know, ten years ago we started Anglican TV, and it's really taken off. Uh, not because of any talent on this side. But because we record mm. uh, valuable sermons and services around the world, and people of like mind find that very encouraging to see a church that's actively participating in the gospel, which you don't see a lot, Gavin. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> we better get, let's move yeah, on to the news before we start to bore people to death. Um, sure. We have over here in America, we have Hollywood. You've certainly seen the, the blockbusters of Hollywood and um from the early days, we've known that Hollywood is about corrupt people uh, who are really high on their egos, who like to go before the cameras and um, entertain us. And we like to be entertained. There's some great movies out there uh, in the last hundred years that are you know, worthy to be watched over and over again. However, we still have the problem of people who uh, have less than, I would say, clear moral standards. And uh, one of those gentlemen is Harvey Weinstein. Uh, now it's Kevin Spacey. Uh, we, we could go through a list, uh, you know, 10 pages long of just the recent Hollywood people who uh, like to violate other people's rights, privileges, um, and have power over them. And I thought, you know, if it's, if it's here, it's everywhere. And you were relating a story to me that's happened over in England. I said, well, that's, that's this all over again. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, Jay Nozan and some of the accusations and where this can go. Kevin, I think the reason for talking about this is not to join in with the um, with the gossip of right. the tabloids uh, or, or to give greater airtime to the 
uh, to the vulnerabilities and stupidities of, of, of human beings and sex. It, it's because I think it gives us the opportunity to reflect on how differently Christians should be able to do human frailty. So that, I think, is the purpose of talking about it. Mm. Um, the, the facts are that, as you know, Harvey, uh, Harvey, uh, I, I keep, I, I can't say it, but is it Weinstein, Weinstein, isn't it? Yes, it's like Weinstein, Frankenstein. Okay. No, it's Frankenstein. But go on. <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get you to say Worcester, Worcester, Worcester. later on oh, in the program. Gosh. No, <laughs> Worcester. <laughs> so, <laughs> Harvey Weinstein uh, has uh, understandably shocked and horrified people with his behavior. And it's led to an understandable campaign uh, using the hashtag at me too for people who, uh, for women in particular, who've been harassed and oppressed by, uh, by men, uh, misbehaving. Uh, and actually, it's had a huge knock-on effect. Uh, the the um, the BBC has, has has found another fifty or sixty people who've been reported to them. Uh, our government has is on the verge of possibly toppling uh, because of the possible resignations. Okay. One one MP uh, for Wales uh, last week was accused. He was told by his party that he had had accusations made against him. They wouldn't tell him what they were. And he killed himself. Um, and, and now there's a whole quite proper post-mortem to why they didn't tell him what they were, whether they were there at all. Anyway, this is this is happening very badly. However, uh, in in the Church of England, there is a an LGBT activist who's very well known and who's very good at her job called Jane Ozan. She uses the media with great skill. Uh, and she used to be a single evangelical uh, laywoman. And she became uh, an, a gay LGBT activist less evangelical in the minds of some of us uh, and has been conducting a very powerful campaign on behalf of gay marriage single-handed um, she's really an, she's she's very good at the media and i should i should uh i should sort of uh, make it public that jane and i have crossed swords on the bbc world service and elsewhere the really funny thing is that 10 years ago i was an lgbt activist and i've repented and she was a kind of sober conservative evangelical single lay woman and we have we've swapped sides and, and so clearly she a, has repented of that yes <laughs> <laughs> That's so poignancy when it comes to our conversations. Um, Jane has chosen to use the at me too hashtag to make some personal um, uh, personal announcements about her life. And so she she went on to the television to explain that she had been raped by an Anglican priest when she was younger. And that, that, that was very, one very bad thing, the at me too, I've been abused by this man. Uh, but she also then said she had brought it up again with a bishop in very recently and he had advised her not to take it any further uh, i don't want to go into the reasons because i'm not interested in the pros and the cons what what interests me is the way in which uh, jane azan has you has has married her own circumstances to those of the at me too campaign because um the the weinstein dynamic is essentially about uh, the misuse of power and the war between the genders and and when it happens to, to christians uh, it 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 becomes set in a different context to my mind now one of the things that christians uh, do is they're not surprised when they hear about human frailty human stupidity and human sin we say well we knew that that's why that's what Jesus came to save us from. Mm -hmm. So we, it's of no surprise to us at all that, that Harvey Weinstein gets up to something and, and uh, uh, other actors and actresses get up to other things. But how do we? What do we do about it? That's the question. And within the Christian economy, the pastoral economy, there are always uh, two vying standards or responses. One is law and justice, uh, and the other is grace. And so I remember, particularly for those of us who hear confessions, one of the things that you often find yourself having to do is to say, well, uh, there has been serious misdemeanor, serious failure, serious disobedience. What can we do now? Absolution is predicated on repentance. If you have someone who's fallen flat on their face and they have repented and they will seek absolution, how do you then mend uh, both their soul and their lives, and perhaps the people they've wounded as well. And well, that's one of the you, things. That how do you avoid do. this happening again? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. when the the, the, the the repentant and healed person mm. ought to be able not to do it again. Although, as Saint Peter showed, sometimes you can sin three times without without yes. intending to. Yeah. Uh, 
On the other hand, there are circumstances where uh, the situation is so serious that the room for grace is seriously minimised. And I think our dreadful experience of paedophile clergy uh, gives us an illustration of what that area is like. So here we have a scale, if you like, of, of misdemeanour. On the one hand, the abuse of children, which Jesus made it perfectly clear was one of the greatest sins out there. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, human beings, consensually or not, messing each other up and damaging each other and, and seeking penitence, reconciliation and forgiveness to move on. My difficulty with the campaign that has been launched in the Church of England is that it doesn't make use of the resources we have as Christians for, for penitence and reconciliation. What it does is it invokes the power mechanisms of the world, which on the whole are neither merciful nor terribly effective. <laughs> <laughs> and always and politically church, correct. I mean, oh, it, the, the, the suicide of your MP is proof that the, uh, the way the world wants to do it uh, shows no grace, no mercy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a power. It's a power struggle, and there is no grace or mercy in power. You know that that's the mistake people make in their understanding of God. They assume the kind of Freudian God of projected power. And and one of the pieces of good news that we have as Christians to say is, no, God, God is not power. Before His power, He's mercy, love, and vulnerability, and He wants to make us in the same image. So although this campaign is intended to uh, minimize human frailty and to circumscribe human misbehavior. The intention is to provide a, a separate agency outside the church, effectively to our act as a kind of star chamber for sexual misdemeanor. Um, but to my mind, this is modeling the church on the world, uh, and, and the world's remedies don't actually work very well. These sexual um, exploitations uh, re-emerge decade after decade after decade. Um, Christians have a different way of doing it, and, uh, and we, should, we should actually, uh, in the face of this and our own misdemeanors, we should say, well, we're the same as you, but we have a different route to deal with it, and we think actually ours is better. Yeah, uh, it, it's clearly better. The one thing I find surprising is everyone knew. Everybody who, when this story broke about Harvey and Kevin Spacey and other actors, people, yeah, we all knew. Um, and when the stories broke about the, the Roman Catholic Church in the, the 60s, 70s, and 50s, yeah, we all knew. The, the bishops knew, people knew. And I think we're getting to the point where... Uh, the um they're willing to intervene a lot sooner and i think that's the and good that's a, thing and that's a good thing yeah no that's a very good thing so, I mean, we haven't said that yet so so, so let it be said mm -hmm. the non-intervention uh was a serious dereliction of duty i think what i've been suggesting is there are two ways of intervening mm -hmm. one with one with muscular discipline mm -hmm. uh, and, and one with serious pastoral continued oversight and attention but they, they're both predicated on intervention the non-intervention which you've quite rightly brought up uh, is a, a serious blemish mm -hmm. on the responsibility of the church apart from anything else uh, it's ignoring sin and and you know we have a remedy for sin but it doesn't include ignoring it yeah all right. Well, we need to move on to one other story. We're going to go long today. I'm sorry, people, but I hope you've drinking your tea and coffee because Gavin and I are going to get into it. Um, here in America, our colleges are broken. Uh, to say the the uh, the students are running the system is an understatement. Uh, they can refuse people to come and speak to them. They can demand that their grades be eased, that they can have time off for uh, you know, whatever anxiety of the day they have. They have Lego and coloring parties here in America. Um, we've lost control of our universities. Albeit you have also done this in England, uh, Gavin. I have hearing rumors of a certain bishop former bishop of rochester uh who was they were considering inviting to a college there uh and that invitation never went out michael nazi ali who's one of our cleverest bishops mm -hmm. uh, and one of our best one of our, our most impressive episcopal figures he he like all the rest of us he has strengths and he has weaknesses his strengths are formidable uh he oh, was invited to go to came <laughs> he was invited to go to cambridge uh -huh. where he was talking about Pakistani culture from a Christian perspective. And while he was there, the senior lecturer who invited him 
uh, made inquiries of his college. I won't say which one it was because we we don't need to single it out. And anyway, it's ubi it's ubiquitous. It would it would probably have been all of them. <laughs> I I would say in ten years this would happen at Oxford. But go on. Yes, yes, go. Uh, so he made inquiries of the chaplain since Michael was going to be there over the weekend whether he might be invited to preach. He's a good preacher. Uh, the chaplain of this particular college consulted the dean, uh, and the chaplain and the dean got back and said he's not welcome. And the reason he's not welcome is because we know his views in favour of traditional Christian marriage, and they're not welcome here. They might upset some of our students. Not they would upset, but 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 they might upset. So no, he can't preach. Um, well, I, I mean, what effectively we have it, it means that. Um, Effectively, any traditionalist Christian, any Christian who holds the views that all Christians have always held up until tea time last November, or whenever it was that yes. this new culture seriously <laughs> changed, uh, would now not be able to preach uh, in, in Cambridge, certainly, and in, I mean, in, in many places. So we are having this, this, this very serious bifurcation of cultures in which Orthodox Christianity and those who represent it are being marginalized and excluded. It's, it's really very serious. It is serious. Well, when you lose the, the universities, you've lost your culture. Um, that's where you want to take minds of mush and f and start to form them to you know have them there's nothing wrong with having them question everything there is something wrong with when they question gravity you know and, and some of the more serious concepts because you want them to be able to think and have logical logic trees in, in their thinking and reasoning and um i, I we're, we're losing I would say at least the next three generations of our students. Now, I say this as a person who's, I've already graduated one daughter through college, I have another one in the middle of college, and a son who's eager to go to college, and he can't wait to change the ways of college. So we shall see what happens, but what time is it? Your, your, oh, it's, your uh, clocks it, are off. I got. I have uh, 23 I have minutes <laughs> after the hour. What are you doing over there in England? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, some some of my clocks don't keep very good time, and I have to go around adjusting them. There are a couple I haven't adjusted. Mea culpa, you're right. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I'm under the leadership of Uncle Sam, and Uncle Sam deems that twice a year I have to move my clock forward or backward by one hour. And we have currently moved our clock backward, and now I sleep until uh, way past my wake-up time, and I have to go to bed early because I'm so tired. Thank you, Uncle Sam. <laughs> do you do that? You don't do that crazy stuff over there in, in Europe, do you? Spring forward, spring forward, fall backwards. Yeah, we do, oh. and and it is really silly. Uh, and it's, for us, it's all it's all done to keep Scottish farmers and their cows happy. <laughs> yes, and that doesn't that doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, it, thought of first by Benjamin Franklin. He was the uh, gentleman who came up with the idea, and it's his worst invention. You know, stick with yep. the, the post office, the telegraph. Oh, well. I want to thank you very much for your time, Gavin. I've been, uh, I've been, I am Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden, and you've been listening to episode 347. Nope. One. 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 340. One. I wrote it down, and then I my diary listen. closed. <laughs> I was just going to glance down professionally, and 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 it it had closed. Well, Three hundred and forty-one. I'm getting so old that I have to uh, take notes as we're writing yeah, things. I need to. T uh, Gavin's making a great point. Oh, I should say this because by the time it comes, to you, you pause. I'll forgotten what I should have said. So I think I've covered it. Really. I, I, I trespass on your concentration boundaries just because I'm too garrulous. I'm so sorry. <laughs>